Okay, after leaving Eden and we're making our way down to Tasmania, we're going to do all the ocean stops. Um, now, this little place is called the Tanga Bee. It's about, I don't know, 17 odd miles down from Eden itself, down the coast. And it's not the easiest place from the waterline to pick because everything's very low lying on the land, it is very hard to see. And when you do pick it, you start coming in. If there is a swell running, which we had on the day we come in, it does look a bit on the scary side with waves breaking off the rock bar on the left and the right. But once you start making yourself in between them, you realise there is a channel in between. Once inside, it's deep enough for anchorage. We're in about three metres of water and a sandy bottom, so it's good anchorage. And a bit rolly inside. You've got to choose your weather for this one. Plenty of walks to do around the place. It is the National Parks area, which is run by the parks. Uh, there's a camping area up on the left-hand side, up on the top, as you can see on the video. And plenty of places to kayak and whatever, because the creek runs a fair way up inland. So it's a good place to explore. So please enjoy the rest of the video, uh, it is a worthwhile place to stop at and have a look and even spend time there if you get the right weather for it.
Our next stop was Gabo Island for an anchorage. Gabo Island is um, missed by most yachties as they go on through. They usually make the turn at Gabo heading down to Tasmania. It is probably one of the must do stops for an anchorage when the winds are right because it is such a beautiful little spot. Plenty of walks you can do on the island. You can even stay on the island because it's run by the Victoria Parks um, and is managed by a caretaker couple on there. And as you can see, it was really good weather when we were there, tucked in down in the cove. The only one thing about the anchorage there, uh, it is a, a very weedy area, just like any of the southern waters down here. There is some, because the water is very clear, which it is most of the time down here, um, you can see the sandy spots. As you can see on the video, we've managed to run our anchor out in the white sand and it's, it's good holding. Um, there is a couple of wrecks in the cove there, but um, steer clear of them and you should be fairly well right. We left Gabo this morning, Gabo Island, and we're on our way to Point Peaks. Couldn't ask for better out here. And over on the mainland side over here, we have another possible anchorage area called the Skerries. Um, they're a seabird colony rock group. I don't think I'll stop there today, we'll get to point X. Well as you can see we arrived at point X. I know it looks very flat in there and it was a big surprise for us because around the point we were in 25 knots to gusting up to 30 and a very large swell rolling around. We wondered what was inside, but as you can see, by under our anchor watch screenshot, we hit the right spot. Because on Google Photos, it shows a quite a rough day at that time. So we're quite happy, it's a sandy bottom. There are submerged rocks 
that do poke out now and then which are not on the charts so beware when you come in not to come in too close to the rock areas but a very nice place to get out you can walk up the tracks you can go to the lighthouse it's run by the Victoria Parks again and very so nice area here, here. Our next stop will be worthwhile to do the stop along the coast to Lake Entrance tomorrow, anyway. Okay, it's now Friday. And we're leaving Point Hicks this morning. As you can see, the wind's really settled down. From yesterday, we had a large swell rolling around the corner. But once inside here, it was pretty calm in here. It's quite amazing how well sheltered it is just in this little cove in here. So today we do our 12 hour journey down the coast to lake entrance yonder. Our trip from Point Hicks to lake entrance in Victoria uh, was a very calm affair. Um, it was motoring the whole way. As you can see, in very calm conditions. And the bar at Lake Entrance, even though it's a calm conditions, um, has a, a huge overrun. It can run up to three or four hours or more uh, coming out with an incoming tide. So this gives the motors a real hard workout coming in here. Um, you're going against probably up to four or five knots of current still running out. Uh, as you can see, big playground for the jet skis. They love playing around the waves. Um, so as we come up, we come up to a, like an intersection, a T intersection. So straight ahead, we go up into the lake system. And you got left or right, down the right hand side, looking up that way, is lake entrance and Flagstaff area. We will be going up into lake entrance to tie up. So looking up in the uh, left hand side, at the intersection this also takes you up into the lakes area too so um, there's a lot of different ways to enter up into the lakes so as we come around we head on up into lake entrance itself for shopping with the fishing co-op on the left hand side here and Flagstaff Jetty on the other. Fishing co-op's excellent for getting fuel as well as fish in that um, they sell. The fuel's probably the cheapest I've ever seen at $2.16 at the moment. Um, as for all the tie-ups like Flagstaff and in lake entrance you have a colour code system where the red is permit zones, the yellow is pickup zones, the white zones are 48 hour zones, and the blue is 4 hour zones. So that's not only 
flag stuff, but that's in lake entries as well, those sorts of tie-ups.